So we send all of the signal from one antenna down one fiber. And that, cut, that works up to something like 120 gigabits a second. So that the, from all 27 antennas, the correlator is absorbing somewhere around two and a half terabits a second. So there's 12 of these fibers that go to each antenna. One, for, one is used for the data that comes back. Two are used for the control network, talk, to control all the stuff on them. And then there's two more that's used for the reference. So that, the, all of the fibers then come from each pad out there where you can potentially put an antenna in. There's 12 of these fibers. They all turn up in this room in the corner over here. And then there's patch cables in there, fibers that look something like this, where they can connect fibers coming from an antenna over here to another fiber that goes off into the other part of the building where the correlator is and the network and stuff like that. So when they move an antenna, fiber guys will go out there and hook it, get it all protected. <coughs> transporter, transporter will come, pick the end whole antenna up, take it off, move it down to where they're going to put the new one, and then our fiber optics guys will come and put that back up, change the patching in here, and we'll check and make sure all the signals are getting through. My job is to run the array uh, to make sure everything works. Uh, get observing proposals that come in, they go through a review process. This is generally months in, in advance. Um, once it's reviewed by the Astronomy Review Board and approved, then they submit their data into a database. Uh, when it comes time for me to run something, uh, I have a scheduling tool that I run uh, that actually shows up right here. and um, I, I run that and that looks at the current wind information, current atmospheric stability, uh, the current configuration, the time, and then it looks at the priorities of the various proposals that have been submitted, and it will select programs to run based on, based on all of that and, and schedule them for a certain time. And I just take the top one off the list and start that when it comes time for it to start. We do that several times a day, usually. There's a, uh, observatories can run. We uh, watch, watch things as they run. Uh, normally things run pretty well. If there's a problem, one thing is when something's running. Um, one of the things I do is I keep a log, I start a log for each observation. And when something goes wrong with something, uh, a lot of things are, are minor. They, they might affect some data, but we don't shut them stop the observation based on it. Uh, I'll make a note of it in the log. Um, every couple hours I make a record the current weather information for the astronomers. And, um, and and any other any other problem, any other things that they need to know about to process their data. Make all that info put all that in the log. At the end of the observation I close the log out, I send a copy of it to the astronomer. That's generally the first time they know that their observation ran because we do this dynamically. They don't know exactly what time it's going to start or what day necessarily. It's going to be. So when they get the log, they know that it ran. The log has information in it about where their data is. And they can download that, usually download their data over the internet. So the astronomers never have to have to come out here. They, they, they can be anywhere pretty much on the planet as long as they have internet access. And they can submit their observations and they can uh, get the results and look at the results 